What do you make of Stuart Baxter's resignation? Yeah, obviously it's um, unfortunate. Obviously it sets the national team back quite a bit. And I think in terms of our football development, I don't think we're anywhere near where we wanted to be. We had this whole Operation 2022. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how much, uh, you know, how much breakthrough we've had. And the setback of another coach at this level just, just puts us that, back, that much back further. Yeah. Mark, you no doubt have your ears close to the ground. Uh, Stuart Baxter named a number of issues that, well, ultimately pushed him to resign. He spoke about the working conditions, the environment in which he worked under, so various factors. What do you think uh, was the main point of contention here? I think ultimately a coach is, is, is judged on, on how he, his team performs. Mm. And, you know, with him, I think it's, it's, there's a lot of issues at play and within the surface structures. Um, we know over the years we've always heard about uh, influencers, people trying to have their say. Um, and the coach doesn't always have it all his own way. And if you're going to die, I think you want to die uh, by your own words and by your own ways. Yeah. and doing exactly what you want to do. Um, at the end of the day, I don't think he was given the latitude to do and operate in uh, complete, with a complete authority. Mm. And ultimately, you know, as a coach, you have to make a decision what's best for you and how you want to operate and what kind of legacy you want to leave. So I don't think he was um, given, you know, the right to just operate um, and given carte blanche to do as he pleases. And I don't know if that would be the defining factor, but ultimately that also affects the result that you achieve. Yeah. And this obviously is now the end result. Let's talk about some of the results that he has achieved. How would you describe his tenure as a Bafana Bafana coach? Well, obviously it's, it's a tough one because we didn't qualify for the last World Cup mm -hmm. and we, we went to this AFCON. I think a lot more was expected. We were expected to at least challenge. We got to the quarterfinal. We weren't expected to beat Egypt. So it always changes. Like, not much is expected from the team. Then we win one or two games. Then a great deal is expected. And I don't think we're sober in our judgments of this team as a nation. I think we need to give this team time to grow. And whoever now does take over, I think we as a nation need to just have realistic and sober expectations. Because I don't think we have that right now. We win one or two games and automatically we, we expect it to be world beaters. Mm. I think we, we have to give this uh, team a chance to grow, which we haven't done. I mean, we uh, put Operation 2022, uh, implemented those, uh, those uh, statutes in place, I think when we didn't qualify for the 2014 World Cup. And look where we are now. Mm. It's literally five years later, and we haven't really done much. We haven't um, broken any ground. We can't see that there's been a consistent growth, uh, a, a pattern of growth, because... We don't allow the team to grow. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone through so many coaches in that period. We're not giving anybody the amount of time they need in order to get systems in place. And we're our own worst enemy at this point in time. And we need to decide and be sober in our judgments. What do we want from this team? How do we want them to perform? How far do we see them going in future tournaments? What kind of football do we want to play? We have yeah. to be sober in judgment. Do we want to win or do we want to play good football? Those are all the questions we need to ask ourselves as a nation. And then we need to decide who the best man is for whatever we decide and whatever we want from our football. Yeah, you make a very interesting uh, point, uh, Mark, uh, with regards to South Africa's long-term strategy in order to make a huge impact uh, in, in the football world. Uh, you know, you have to get those, those, those kids in primary school, high school level, and nurture them, uh, you know, through the ranks. Are we doing that? Are there any programs in place in order to further this, uh, this objective? Um, to put it bluntly, no. Mm. Ultimately, what we're expecting is we're expecting our players to pass varsity when they haven't been to primary school and high school. Yeah. And that's uh, the bottom line. So um, I think Danny Jordan put it that way when he came in. But to be honest, um, I think at this point, they, we've tried, but we haven't really gotten it right. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do at, you know, at ground level um, in South African football. And ultimately, I think it starts even with the culture of our football. What kind of football do we as a nation want to play? Do we have an identity as South Africans? When we see our national team playing, what do we expect? How do we want to see them playing? 
We don't have all that in place. I don't know what to expect when I watch the national team play. Are we going, you know, going to play Route 1? Are we going to play Tika Taka football? Um, we really, we don't have an identity right now. We don't even know what kind of football best suits us as a nation. And those are the things we need to figure out before we're going to make any progress. Yeah. You know, going back to Stuart Baxter, he uh, mentioned the media and he said it's basically background noise, but it has, uh, you know, some sort of part to play with regards to his tenure uh, during uh, as, as Bafana Bafana coach. He, I think he paraphrased Mark Twain saying that get your facts straight before you distort them. Uh, do you think uh, the media gave him a bit of a raw deal or is it all well, part of the course? It's, it's a really difficult one. Um, I think, like I say, ultimately, as a coach, you, have, you are judged on your results. Um, yeah. I think um, they, they were a bit hard on him, but at times, they, you know, they were fair. Ultimately, when you're playing at this level of the game and, or you're coaching at this level of the game, if, if you're doing the right things, implementing the, um, and, and implementing the right system, um, we want to see progress. And I think a lot of times that. If, if, if you are breaking ground and you are showing new things, you are showing direction, you are showing purpose, um, you know, then there's something to work off of. But yeah. ultimately, I think our showing at this last Nations Cup was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back because, um, you know, there were games, uh, you look at just the opening game against Ivory Coast, where you couldn't really uh, tell what we were trying to do. And ultimately, that's going to come down to the coach and the coach will be judged on that. And Unfortunately, um, I don't think he had enough time to build a team. Yeah. Um, but that's the nature of the beast. That's the nature of the game right now, um, especially at national team level. You're not working with these players day in and day out. So you yeah. get them for two weeks before a major tournament. How much can you really do? But that is, like I said, the nature of the animal. And every other coach is judged on the same basis. Yeah. Uh, do you think he was prepared coming in, in as Bafana, Bafana coach to deal with the various issues? I mean, Stuart Baxter is a very good coach. He's shown himself and he's proven himself, especially in the Absa Premiership. He's done uh, phenomenally well with KZ Chiefs. Yeah. Um, he's coached Bafana Bafana before, so um, he would know what to expect. He would know the conditions of our football. He would know the permutations that come with the job of this nature. So, um, you know, to say that he wasn't prepared, I don't think he would have taken the job if he weren't prepared. So, uh, unfortunately, this is the reality. I think it's premature. I, didn't, I don't think it was the right decision to let him go right now. But, you know, did we really have a choice? The team is, mm. is not playing uh, the way South Africans want them to play. It, it's a really, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, to be honest. Um, I still think we need to give someone a, a great deal of time in order to get uh, this team playing the way we know that they can. But are we willing to do that as South Africans? Well, Baxter said he's not sure what's his next move. Uh, what's uh, Bafana Bafana's next move, uh, Mark? Uh, which names are in the hat uh, to take over from Baxter? What do you well, think? Well, quite a few names have been bandied about. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of people have been calling for Peter Mosimani to be given another chance. Um, mm. Obviously, Benny McCarthy, um, you know, the golden boy of South African football. He's done so well for us as a player. And I'm sure that one day he will do phenomenal things for us um, as a coach as well. I'm not quite sure that now is the right time for, for Benny McCarthy. Yeah. Um, but I, I do believe that he, he is the future Bafana Bafana coach. Um, and then for me, you know, we've always, for some reason, Gavin Hunt has not been given a chance yet. Mm. Um, I know it's something that he would have wanted to do. He's applied in the past. Uh, I'm not sure if he still uh, would throw his name in the hat, but yeah. he's the most winning, one of the most winning coaches in the country. And that's why I say we need to decide what we want to do as a nation. Mm. If we want to win right now, I believe Gavin, that someone like Gavin Hunt is the right person. If we want to win right now, I think Gavin Hunt knows how to win games. But he won't necessarily play the type of football that South Africans want or that South Africans um, will, will look, look forward to. But we need yeah. to decide what we want. So there will be coaches who will, um, who will come in and play great football, but they won't necessarily win. Um, but that's why I say we need to decide right now what's best for us as a nation. What do yeah. we want to see happening, um, not just in the near future, but, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now. So stick your neck out, Mark. Uh, you'll give it to Gavin? Well, if we, I, I'm not a, a results-oriented person. I think <laughs> we need to think bigger picture. If we want to win, if we want to get to the, world, the next World Cup and, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a really difficult one. I think yeah. I would give it to Gavin because I know he's, he'll get results. I know he's the type of guy, he knows how to win, he'll do what it takes, and he's not necessarily going to play great football, but he knows how to win. And if we want to win, Gavin Nunn, for me, would be the man. All right, Mark, thank you very much indeed for that analysis, your perspective. We really appreciate it. Mark, Mark Haskins is a sports analyst. Okay, so we